something in here. You feel a willy down there? I feel the willies. Oh, am I gonna die tonight? Laugh my little booty, give it a little spank. <laughs> Whoa, did you hear that? Oh! oh. <laughs> yeah, him, that's right. Hi, my name is Ting Rappa, and I have evidence from Dare to Escape. I am Wayne and we have evidence from Dare to Escape. I suddenly felt like somebody was watching me. across like my the back. I was standing up on my car. A stick figure show up on the Somebody pulling camera. on my pant leg. I'm like to find this unexplained shape. Can you guys investigate? Welcome to Ghost Files, where we take your evidence and our tools into the field to expose the supernatural. My partner, a skeptic. Myself, a believer. Both of us, truth seekers. This week, our team travels to Kissimmee, Florida to investigate Dare to Escape. Dare to Escape, the game. Yeah, this is good. This is a peculiarly modern setting. I gotta say, normally the places we go to, they've been long haunted, their stories in the past. It's not often that we go to a place that's actively haunted that called to us to come figure it out. Well, let's get in there, you know what I mean? <laughs> let's get in there where there are mops. Good thing you brought your short shorts. Well, it's Florida, you know. Giving the audience a show. Yeah, give them what they want. Dare to Escape opened its doors in September 2016, boasting, quote, the scariest games in Central Florida. Unlike most investigations where spirits are tied to the location, the entities trapped inside these walls are believed to be tied to props that were bought at thrift stores, antique shops, and estate sales. Think Ed and Lorraine Warren's haunted museum, but with puzzles. And attached to these items are ghosts from different places, times and occupations, including two imprisoned poltergeists with dueling energies that make themselves known to players and employees alike through electrical malfunctions, shadowy appearances, and even scratching the people who foolishly invade their space. Exactly like we are smartly going to do. I genuinely find antique stores to be scarier than maybe any haunted location we've ever been to. Even if the objects aren't quote unquote haunted, there's a sadness to everything on every shelf in antique stores to me. What is the story behind this? Why is it here? Well, it's because probably somebody had it and then they and then died. had to sell it or died. It's just not fun to me. <laughs> I always hated it. Containing seven permanent rooms, they have everything from retro throwbacks like the video store to terrifying traps such as the asylum. Each room has its own energy tied to the antiques contained within. The attic is the brains of the operation filled with electronics used to run the games. This is where we will begin our investigation, believed to be where a mischievous ghost likes to cause electronic malfunctions. We'll continue through hotspots, the archive and the asylum until we find ourselves in the seventh room. We've placed cameras and audio recorders in two of the most active parts of the building in hopes that we catch evidence throughout the night. The first is by the entrance to the basement where a tall shadowy figure has been spotted at the end of the hall. The second location is called the courtyard where the shadowy figure of a spirit who likes to be called the doctor is frequently seen. And as always, to end the investigation, Shane and I will each be forced to explore the entire building one at a time because I want to go to heaven and dying at a tourist attraction would probably make God laugh. What artifact would you haunt after? A jack in the box. Like at the restaurant or like the toy? The little toy. That's classic. I could haunt a toilet. No, wait, if I haunted a toilet, they're just gonna think the toilet's fucked up. So what if like, you know, I, I crank one out and then from deep in the bowl I hear, stinky. <laughs> and that's you. I just realized now though, I would want my entire eternity for people to, to sit their ass on my face. Just like, Hey, some people pay like, good money was, for that. Wait, can I? Could I change my my haunted object, God? I don't want to be locked in this. Oh, here he comes. He's back. No. Oh no, he had Chipotle. Containing electrical relays, switches, and cords which run the rooms, the attic is the control center of the entire operation. 
Lights and effects are known to go off on their own, even when they are powered down. A medium has felt the presence of a playful spirit named Thomas, who supposedly is causing the malfunctions for fun. Employees have been able to communicate with Thomas through knockings, similar to this piece of evidence from Ting Rappa and American Ghost Adventures. The video evidence basically had a flashlight turning on and off to our questions. When we asked it to turn off, it would turn off. When we asked it to say yes to something, if that was correct to turn on, it would do so. The knocking on the wall was through a command that basically said, give us a sign to let us know that you're there. And they did so by knocking. Okay. Miss, are you Miss W? Miss W. Were you, was Mr. Yeah, I did, I was like, I heard that too. Uh, so there is some faint knocking happening in the background. As I mentioned before, that's how Thomas communicates. So we're on the hunt for knockers is what you're saying. No, we are. We're just two guys looking to get get their get their get ears their hands on some get their ears and eyes on some knockers. Could you be professional for one second? Yeah. We got to find Thomas and his knockers. Okay. All right. Let's go find Tommy's knockers. Okay. So here is the attic. Ting Rappa from American Ghost Adventure sent us footage of her communicating via knocking, perhaps with Thomas, the little mischievous ghost up here. Now, Thomas likes to cause malfunctions for fun. That's correct. Uh, everything's sort of un unfortunately placed right now. I'm just staring directly at your crotch. Well, it's a good thing it's me and not you, because if we did it with you, there's a good chance one of the Madays might pop out. That's true. Do you know shaving a haircut, Thomas? Can you finish shaving a haircut for me? Because I hear you like knocking. Could you answer that? Thomas, this is this is the, the start of the investigation. You're not give us something juicy. You're not making us Come feel on, very welcome. Tommy. We just came. We just arrived from L.A. and we, you know we're happy to be in Florida. And this is how you're going to greet us? Knock for us. Come on, Tommy. Give us a knocker. Show us your show us your best knock. This is just the first location. We're just right, getting warmed up sure. here. We're working our way up. It's you know? an appetizer. This is a warm up. That's right. And you know what? I'm feeling warm. Okay, <laughs> okay that's plenty. <laughs> oh my fucking God, dude. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Don't use that in the No, head. we're using that in the edit. What are you talking about? <laughs> it just I, think, I think we scared Tommy away. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, well. Well, sorry, Thomas. That truly was an accident. I want you to know that. All right. Well, it surprised me. Well, let's get to the next location. Our next room is the archive. The room is decorated with wartime memorabilia. During American Ghost Adventures investigation, they were communicating using two flashlights. The spirit in the archive said it had an object in the room that it belonged to. When pressed for which object, the presence identified a clock on the wall that had a tag with the word Yankee on it leading them to believe it was a Civil War soldier. And now the archive. Where the archive things. Uh, okay, we're faced with a wall. I guess we'll... Oh, I guess we'll go home. Oh, <laughs> wait, what? This goes up? Oh. Oh, there's a right. After Shane asks what direction the hallway goes, we pick up a voice saying, right, which is exactly where the hallway does go. <laughs> oh, wait, what? This goes up? Oh. Oh, there's a right. Oh. Oh, there's a right. Whoa, this is crazy, dude. This is very impressive. This is not a commercial. I gotta say, though, this set design is great. It is really good. Now, how Can do we you... go down? I think so. Take your time. Oh. Well, that's, that's okay. Come on down, it's safe. Just grab that there. Yeah, you got it. And then, yeah, just put it, put it in there and, yeah. Okay. You can't trick me. He knows a false door when he sees one. That's right. I have Ooh, them all over rustic, my house. Rustic, 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 rustic. A lot of skulls. Oh, comfy couch. Look at this. It's a little. It kind of looks like you. A, it kind of does. Is that me? Okay, who's in here? I don't Let's know. set what, it up. Help me, help me set the mag light. Okay. A regular mag light, when turned to the space between on and off, can be turned into a touch lamp which you can ask spirits to manipulate. However, the light will also randomly turn on and off in this setting. So, responses need to be timely and repetitive 
for a compelling interaction. I just want to test something. Oh, I got you. It's set up. Oh, what the fuck? It just turned on by itself. That's weird. Uh. So I'm moving around. Heard like a big footstep over there. Oh yeah, I did hear that. That's weird. Uh. It sounded like it was from above us. I don't think so. Whoever's in here, are you actually connected to the Civil War? If so, can you turn on the mag light right now? Whoever was in here before communicated in regards to that clock over there. Is that clock special to you? Could you turn on uh, the flashlight if that clock that says Yankee on it is special to you? Do you like him touching your clock? Do you want me to stop? If you want me to stop touching your clock, then uh, turn the light on. Really make sure you hit the L on that. I'm fondling your clock. If you don't like him touching your clock, why don't you turn on that mag light? Do you like the way he strokes your clock? I'll do whatever I want with this clock. That's right. That clock is his. Look how big that clock looks in his hands. <laughs> <laughs> We've had enough fun. Let's get that ovulus out. The ovulus takes environmental readings that spirits are said to manipulate, such as temperature or electromagnetic fields, and converts them Interrupt. into corresponding words New moon. or phonetic sounds. Let us know if you want to talk, and showtime. Myself raised. You raised yourself. 80, myself, you raised. Till you were 80 years old, did you die at 80? Very. Very. Basement. Very basement. There is a basement here. The basement is the most haunted room in this place. Do you want us to go to the basement? Turn on the light if you want us to go to the basement. How about don't turn on the light if you want us to go to the basement? Wait, it's a ring. Nine. What? Nine. Surface. Ring nine surface. You want me to ring something nine times? Maybe nine knocks on a surface. Is that what you wanted? Now that definitely was a footstep from up there. That sounded like uh, some movement. Is there somebody upstairs that wants to come down here? S-H, Amelie. Whoa, who, did you hear that? S-H? Wait, did you hear that oh, creak? Oh, there was another creak up there, yeah. Amelie. Is there somebody up there? You want to come down? Okay. Wound, gag, and Ameline. <laughs> Sounds like Ameline's a freaky lady. Elisa? Is Lisa! There a, is there a Lisa in here? Or an Ameline? How do you spell Ameline? A-M-E-L-I-N-E. -E. Is there... Bill? Oh, is there a Bill in here? Bill! This Bill. is just a bunch of names. Bill, no. There's no Lisa? There's a whole family tree. Surprise. Surprise. Stab. Surprise stab. Well, that wouldn't be ideal. I would like to not be stabbed or surprised because I hate Surprises. We are gonna be here later alone, so. If you're in this room and you want us to leave, could you turn on that light? Or could you give us a sign? Could you talk to us through the ovulus? What are you? What is it that you want to say to us? Okay, well we're gonna leave this room. How that, now that's contradictory. Johnny. Johnny, R. slow your roll. It says Van, R, R, and Johnny. What do you say R for? You know my name is Ryan, right? If you know my name was Ryan, could you turn on the light? Well, turning it off in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> the asylum was the first room to have any activity. The activity appears to be centered around a navy trunk engraved with the name Nelson, purchased from an estate sale. Later, when a team lead was closing the building by herself, a pneumatic door banger in the room began going off by itself. An electrician examined the wiring. Nothing was wrong. When they looked into the trunk's history, they uncovered the story of a soldier with the name Nelson, who had gone missing at sea and drowned. Perhaps he filled this trunk with his possessions as he sailed the ocean. Despite the trunk being moved into a new room, this room is nicknamed Nelson's Room by paranormal investigators as his energy is still said to be present. Even employees greet him with a friendly, good morning, Nelson. Now it's time for us to say hello. Now, if there's a pneumatic device, a pneumatic, you know, a door knocker, yeah. 
and there's no power going to that, and it's knocking. Yeah. That's an unmotivated knocker. I remain unmoved. By those knockers? Yeah. Oh, what do you think about the haunted chest, perhaps belonging to a, a man named Nelson, and he got lost at sea? What do you think about that chest? I love a big old chest. <laughs> <laughs> After you, sir. Into the asylum. AKA Nelson's room. They used to have a trunk in here and the, the trunk was attached to a person named Nelson. Employees usually say, good morning. Good morning. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Nelson. Oh God, I haven't been paying attention to this camera. You're gonna make fun of me. Yeah, you, what are you just have just a shot of my crotch? <laughs> yeah. Everyone at home, when you're watching this, I'm when I help edit this show, all the footage of Shane's camera is like, Looking up at the ceiling. Nah, look, look. Okay. Get a nice know, view of his shoes. Uh, you, you grab this thing for half the shoot. Yeah. You tell me how well you do. Uh, I want to see what you look like in, in, <laughs> in night vision in this outfit. Yeah, you look ridiculous. <laughs> we have some work to do we here. We do have work to do. Nelson, is there anybody in here with us? Aside from our little teddy bear friend and a little mouse. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Oh, that's a oh, door. No, this is classic escape room. Well, this is fun now. Is this part haunted as well? It's got to be. Wait, really quick before we leave this room. Nelson, if you don't want us to leave Nelson, this... we're going to go. Okay, you go. I'm we got to go. Let me gotta, talk to Nelson. There's a little tunnel. Now. Just get the, get the fuck out of here. Get, get out. Get, get out. Ooh, that's a squeeze. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, my oh. God. I'm in. Cool. See you later. What? Okay, Nelson, is it, there's anybody in here before I leave, just let me know. I'll give you some silence here, Nelson. Okay, well, I'll be back. Come on in. Into Narnia I go. Oh, fuck. You see why that's a squeeze? Yeah. Well, it could... What are you doing? You can't just pull. Oh. Oh. oh! Jesus Christ! The hell was that? So apparently the, the pneumatic door bang was it was activated to show us that uh, how it works. Oh, I see. It was like preloaded for us. Can we do it again? No. And I gotta That's say, interesting. if that went off on its own and I was here alone, <laughs> my soul would leave my body. Yes, that is uh, that would be unnerving. What's under here? Is this a person? Oh, we didn't even look. Oh, man, he's obsessed. Those are the bones. Oh. Looks like she's due for her physical. You should go get that checked. Oh, oh. wow. Whoa, not even human. That's crazy. Could, uh, could you move something around in this creepy room, whoever is here? Why did you choose to haunt an escape room? I'm I mean, curious. it's fun, you know. I guess there's artifacts that are brought in. I know they're not in this exact room. That's true. You're right about that. I think you know what you're doing. Nelson. I can't take you seriously when you're sitting like that. Well, I'll, then I'll stand. <laughs> Nelson! <coughs> Nelson! We have a REM pod here. The REM pod creates its own circular electromagnetic field and will alarm when anything penetrates that field. The more colors on the alarm, the more significant the intrusion. The REM pod also detects temperature fluctuations. Messenger. Bacon. Okay, a lot going on here, right from the Oh, jump. we're going straight into the ovulus, too. Nelson, are you in here? Could you show us a sign that you're in here? Could you speak to us, or can you move towards that red light? Stop. Who? Why do you want us to stop? What, nothing about this. Yeah. Snap. In between snaps, we pick up what sounds like a voice whispering something we can't quite understand. <laughs> Snap and then you. All right, we're gonna stop snapping in a bit, Nelson, and then you start snapping. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. What did the door knocker go on? That'd be good. That'd be sick. Someone should make a compilation of me saying that would be sick. Yeah. Of like, of like, what if this happened? All the scenarios. <laughs> and you know what? Any other ghost show, they'd fake it. They'd fake it. You know what else they do? A lot what of this. They do? Oh man! Whoa! I saw something in the dark. Yeah. Oh! I swear I saw a ghost. Hold the camera still. Yeah, they need gloves. And We're some professionals better, here. And some better footwear. What's that? That's the motion sensor. Pendant. Pendant, Pendant and disease. 
pendant disease. What does that mean? Pendant and disease. Did you die of disease? Whoever's in this room? Or is that the thing that uh, old timey hypnotist, he swing back and forth? Oh, what the fuck is that called? What would you call that? Pendulum. Pendulum. M. 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 What could M stand for? Underline. 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 Is it trying to help us solve the escape room? Oh, I Is there an underline M in here? Linger, Paula, Raid, Beckon, Rain. Whoa, it's going crazy right now. Sentence. Sentence. Sentence for you. What would you like? Rain sentence for me. I think it wants you to do a rain haiku. Like a little poem? Oh, okay. What kind of character do you want, Ryan? Give me a character. A character that is doing a rain dance. Well, I'm not going to do a rain dance. No, that's true. Yeah. How about I skip that? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Wow, dude. What would you like to say? Maybe there's something unleft, uh, uh, there's something left unsaid that you have to now say. Or at the very least, can you step towards that red light? You got it, Nelson. Nelson, we're gonna come back here alone later. We'll be back here alone later, Nelson. Jog. Jog. <laughs> jog King. Jog King, jog. Okay, well, cool. We'll jog on out of here. Oh, it gets really good in those shorts. Well, See you later, Nelson. See you in a bit. The newest game in their building is also its most haunted. Even in the hallway outside, people feel a heavy feeling pushing them back. Staffers find it difficult to breathe as they approach, and mediums immediately begin choking upon stepping inside. <laughs> I don't feel anything. <laughs> it's like when Homer strangles Bart. <laughs> I think that's an incredible way to verify if someone's actually a medium. You bring them to dare to escape, and if they don't start immediately choking, yeah. you ain't a medium. Yeah. All jokes aside though, it's here in this room that staffer Maureen Wakeley witnessed something chilling. So this evidence was actually captured on a Tuesday and during a time when we were actually closed on Tuesday, so nobody had been in and out of our building at all. And in the middle of the night, I received a security alert from our camera that said somebody was in the building. And upon pulling up the security footage, I saw the seventh room door opening by itself. It's open. The last time they saw motion by that door, by the way, was one of the employees coming and closing the door. Yeah, nice. Which, by the way, I don't know if you know how motion uh, works when it comes to these kind of security systems, but when they get a notification that the door opens, that actually means the door was closed as well. Right. So. Well, let's go there. Let's go there. Okay. So this is the seventh room hallway, and the mediums and people alike find this place very uncomfortable. They feel a pain in their chest, and some people. Long one, isn't it? Some people get uh, pushed here. You're not one that's prone to sort of like, oh, I feel no. chills. No. So when you do do that, I, I, I am compelled by it, even though I do think it's just well, maybe a if I, the environs. Well, maybe if I, how about this? It's when they enter the hallway. Okay. So why don't I walk down all the way to the end and then walk back, and if nothing happens to me, that's great, and then you walk down Okay. and you come back. But stay at the end in the dark, because I kind of want to see you down there. And I'll turn off my light. Yeah. There he goes. I don't feel any pain in my chest. Oh! What? There's something in here. What do you mean? There's something in this room. I kind of scared to turn my light on. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna turn the night vision cam over there. Oh, my heart's beating really fast. Did you hear that again? Yeah, there's a bit of a creak. This may seem like a random bump, but our static cam in the room next door reveals that this noise actually comes on command. Can you make a noise for me? Did you hear that again? Maybe you come over here. No, you're supposed to be down there by yourself. Okay, I'm turning my flashlight on, fuck this. Hello? Can you tell me a secret? Shut the fuck up, boo buddy. Is there somebody in here? Weird. Ooh, it's spooky down here. I'm not gonna lie, actually, I get it. And now you have to stand there and see if you feel anything. Does something wanna push me down here? 
Is there a big strong person here who wants to push me? I must warn you. I work out. I mean, barely. What was that? Nothing. I feel the willies, but I don't feel a tightness in my chest. You feel a willy down there? I feel the willies. Oh. Does something want to push me? I'm gonna walk back now. If you want to push me in the back, this would be the chance. Send me flying like a bowling ball and I'll knock down all those stupid pins over there. While I ask someone to push me in the back, our audio recorder picks up a voice saying, hey, under me talking. I'm gonna walk back now. If you wanna push me in the back, I'm gonna walk back now. If you wanna push me in the back, this would be the chance. Did you find it spooky? It, I mean, only because I heard something creeping around in that room. Do I go now? Yeah, you go now. All right, now your turn. Okay. Hello, it's me, Shane. I'm the guy now. Very dark. I'm walking past the door that um, allegedly opens and closes on its own. I hear that fucking boo buddy? Ryan, this was the door that you felt uncomfortable about, huh? Yeah, well, it was because I heard something over there. It wasn't that I felt uncomfortable, I just heard something. I don't see anything. I just see our little friend up in the corner. Stop stalling and go to the end of the hallway. Who am I calling on to? Anything. Okay. Anything. <laughs> Anybody. Unbelievable. Any ghosts here? Ask something to push you. Push me. Um, give me a feeling of unease. Grab my plums. <laughs> Grab my plums. <laughs> He's got small shorts on. You could come in easy from the south. Give my thigh a scratch. Scratch his translucent white thighs. These are yours for the taking. No one in history has ever been scratched. I'm telling you, it's God, all baloney. It's so sick if you got scratched so hard right now. It would, it would be incredible. It's never gonna happen. Well, come back down here. Obviously nothing's happening to you. Nice. I like that. That's really good. <laughs> was it good? That was really good. That was actually pretty scary. Nice. All right, we're gonna fire up the Estes method. I'm gonna sit with my back to that door that opens by itself. The Estes method is a technique when one person wears noise-canceling headphones connected to the spirit box, becoming a human speaker system by repeating exactly what they hear. The other person facilitates communication with spirits by asking questions and attempting to elicit clear and direct responses. Okay, so he looks like he is off to the races. If anyone's here, any ghosts, uh, manipulate the radio. My name's Shane, that's Ryan. Introduce yourself. Tell us your name. Or a word that would hint toward your uh, identity. Or any word. Go. You want us to leave? Is that it? How long have you uh, been around these parts? No. Me. Uh, yes, you. How long have you been around these parts? How long have you been yeah. here? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any information about yourself? Do Even. <laughs> Even. <laughs> Stop. No. Tell me about yourself. Do that. Yes, do that. Who are you? Uh. Uh. If I'm talking to Nelson, give me some confirmation. Shane? Or Rain. Shane, Rain? Shane, oh wow. That's correct, my name is Shane Nelson. Is your name Nelson? Am I talking to Nelson? Or, wait, is there a ghost named Shane here? Am I gonna die tonight and then? Pockets. So, yeah, I got some pockets. You wanna hold on to my pocket? Hold on to my pocket, Nelson. Hey. Yeah, you heard me. Hold on to my pocket, Nelson. That's right. Hey. Yes. Good. Good, you're my ghost now. What do you think about that? Do you know you're a ghost, Nelson? Attack. Are you rallying all the ghosts? I've heard tell of a shadow man around here. Get out. Oh, nice try. Ain't gonna be that easy. Is there a shadow man here? Uh. <laughs> not a big fan of the shadow man? Go. I'm not going. Is there a doctor here? Dark. Dark. That sounds like uh, classic shadow man stuff. Dark is what you are. Uh, you're the absence of light, so yeah. I guess he's here too. We got them all. We got them all. It's us. The, Me. It's the whole gang. Okay, great. Everybody's here. Uh, I want you Shane. guys- Shane. Yes. Sound like Shane again. Uh, cool. 
Well, we're gonna be here later. Ryan's gonna be here by himself. I'll be here by myself. Um, uh, in the meantime, keep holding on to my pocket, you little bitch. And, Come. Uh, what, what, huh? Fine. What? Okay, we're gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna take Ryan out of it here. Ryan? After? Nope. Wait, right, fucking. Okay, we're back. They're all here. All the ghosts are here. What do you mean? We've got Nelson. We've got Shadow oh, Man. I can. Was it a productive conversation? Did it actually make sense? I mean, it was, you know, nonsense, but yeah, sure. Let's go. I'm kind of enjoying sitting down, though. Will you stand up? Oh, can you help me up? Yeah! <laughs> As we enter the seventh room, it is made up of three distinct sections. The crypt, where there is no reported activity, and the conjoined rooms of the basement and the courtyard, which has so much activity that it seems to overflow into other rooms. In the center of the courtyard is a seven foot high slope, which has been named the Shadow Man Hill, for the figure often seen standing there. He appeared first to employees, and then soon, guests would begin asking how they did the Shadow Man effect on the hill. One player, who claimed to be a medium, felt a man watching them the whole time. During American Ghost Adventures investigation, the Shadow Man told them that he didn't like that name. Instead, he preferred the Doctor. In fact, a manager was apparently scratched by the Doctor while sitting in a wheelchair in this room, leading employees to feel as if the Doctor was a bad spirit, while Nelson was their good spirit as Maureen and Sean explained. Their clashing has created a vortex of activity. I say, let them fight. So Shadow Man on a hill. Shadow Man on a hill. So you should purposely not call him doctor. Oh, I'm not gonna. You should call him Shadow Man, because it pisses him off. That's what you should do, because you're unscratchable. You're the unscratchable shame. You've never been scratched. Unscratchable. I love unscratchable Shane. Unscratchable Shane here. Yeah. Talking to Shadow. <laughs> Little Shadow bitch. I was gonna say gonna Shadow. Say? <laughs> if you get scratched though, will that solve it once if and I, for all? Yes. And that's been the case the whole time. If I get scratched by a ghost, I'll believe it. So I'm gonna I have, don't believe anyone who has ever claimed to get scratched by a ghost. I think it's So to be clear though, fake. for full for full scientific effect, yeah. we're gonna have to have somebody examine you head to toe. No one's exa I'm not I'm not no. I'm not doing Well we that. need to see if you're scratched no. or not. If I get scratched, I will tell you. We're gonna need a full examination, like one of those people on an autopsy, like the chart. You're not giving me a cavity search, okay? If I get scratched- I could have my cousin do it. I don't want Carter to do that. Why not? He's good at it. I, what? <laughs> Before we begin investigation in the courtyard, our boo buddy picked up this disembodied voice. And later, unexplained noises when nobody was around. So now we're going to the courtyard room, and this is where there's a hill that people see a shadow man on. A shadow man, huh? Yeah. He's seen in here, and I have the SLS cam for that very reason. Maybe we'll pick him up in the dark. The SLS cam uses a grid of infrared light to recognize human-like objects in front of it, even in complete darkness. I could see why people would see a shadow person up there. Yeah, because sometimes you can make shadows. Look, there's shadows. Yeah, Is that but a they, person? None of them look like a person. See a person there? Apparently, the Shadow Man, a psychic said that the Shadow Man actually likes being called a different name. The name Misha. that the Shadow Man prefers is the Doctor. What? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. I don't like that my name has anonymity. Give me something that has some more personality. How about the Doctor? Did he go to medical school? I don't know. Did you go to medical school? If you went to medical school, could you approach that red light on the top of the hill? Can you approach the light if you went to medical school? Is that why you like being called the doctor? I'm not seeing anything on SLS. Well, actually, no, it's, it's starting to boot up now. Okay, so yeah, I could see you. Shane's got a little skeleton figure. Nice, love to see that. All right, now I'm gonna go back up to the hill. Not seeing anything on the hill. All right, back to Shane, still boogieing. Wow, your legs really are like as bright as the surface of the sun. You don't tan often, do you, huh? It's bad, bad for skin. If there's anybody uh, in this room, could you uh, move something? Could you touch one of us? Can you show yourself on top of that hill? Shadow man, 
How about you, Shadow Man? Yeah. I know you don't like being called that, but I'm going to keep calling you that until you actually respond to us. Ryan and I can relate to you. Uh, we both have Shadow Men of our own. In a way, they're our prisoners because they must follow us wherever we go. That's true, and that's a, a punishment I would wish on nobody. Um, it's actually kind of similar to Mark's punishment. He has to follow us around everywhere we go. It's true. Yep. And it, he is... Oh! All right, now we're getting somewhere. Looks like the temperature is spiking up there. And it was getting warm up there. Is that you, Shadow Man? Could you do that again? Or are you just gonna hide all night? I would love to see a Shadow Man, if in fact there is one. We're not gonna wait here all day. We are coming back later, so. You better start uh, communicating or we're gonna leave. Let's give him a beat of silence. Here's some silence for you. You really don't want to communicate with us, huh? Well, you gave us a little beep beep. You give us a beep That's beep. That's something, a little beep something. Well, we're gonna leave now. But we'll be back later. Okay. Yeah, that'll... Did you not like that? You not like me pointing at you? Oh, shit. Should I point at it again? Yeah, point at it again. Do you not like me doing that? You don't like me pointing out your failure, that you can't manifest, you're not powerful enough? Everybody's got a shadow. Or did you just not want me to leave? Not very impressive. Yeah, it's not very impressive, we're gonna leave. You should try having a body. Yeah, you don't wanna talk to us, that's fine. We'll leave. Later in the night, a REM pod we left in this location was triggered. The basement contains most of their artifacts, including Nelson's trunk, which has been heard dragging. And maybe Nelson himself has been reached in this room as well. But perhaps the most chilling occurrence in this room was actually caught on camera by employee Sean Murphy. In the middle of the night, we got an alert from our Nest camera saying that there was movement in the basement. When we pulled up the cameras, the only thing we could see were lights flickering, props going off, including one of those old school monkeys with the symbols and there was nobody here to set those off, and the system was actually shut down. There he is, yeah. <laughs> That's the guy. <laughs> look at him! Why were toys his, terrifying? Look back at his in little the day? face! I know, look at him. I gotta say, I am a little cautious about this place because escape rooms, the whole thing is like theatricality. So I feel like we're walking into an amusement park. I'm going to trust and take their word that they're not like trying to pull one over on us. Oh God, here comes the pre-excuses. Uh, they're not pre-excuses. They're I'm pre-excuses. Doing... This is fucking due diligence, pre -excuses. mon frere. Pre-excuses. This is, what, this is what you're doing right now? You're, what? You're setting your little bullshit skeptic table. Let's see this fucking monkey. All right, the big bad of the episode here. Into the basement. Now this is the room that has all of the real artifacts. Uh, most of the artifacts in here are somehow are you real? connected. Are you a real lady? Looks like we got a stone gargoyle. Oh, yeah, Hello. Vintage war radio. Oh, oh yeah. wait, where's that monkey that was? <gasps> is this there a monkey? He is. Oh, look at, him. look at the little monkey. Monkey, can you clap for us? Whoever's in this room, could you make the monkey clap again? Make the monkey clap again. The scary Give monkey. Give us some monkey claps. How about any of the other guys up here? Tribal Bali mask, sacrificial bull. Mummified okay. skull, what about you? Do a little dance. With a little face hugger Petrified on hand, it. maybe you'd like to give us a middle finger or do some snaps. This is crazy, but 
in this photo, one of these people is dead. And I mean, they're all both obviously dead. This is a very old photo. I mean, one of them is posed in this photo while they are dead. It's really hard to tell. I'm gonna guess Joyce. I think it's Joyce. Joyce has a deadness to her eyes. Her eyes aren't totally there. There. It would be really a bummer if it was Tim and we're like, Joyce looks dead. A bummer if it was Tim and we're like, a bummer if it was Tim and we're like, Joyce looks dead. Cool. Well, we could turn on the uh, spirit box right now and ask who it oh, actually yeah. is. The spirit box rapidly scans radio signals to create white noise through which spirits can communicate. And the honey tone filters out the noise while amplifying only the voices. Hello. This is Nelson's trunk right here. This is the one that was moved from the other room. And they also do hear dragging. As you can see, this thing is, well, I guess I could see how that could drag. And this is the wheelchair where people sit and get scratched. How about this? Oh, oh yeah, what? You have, you're the unscratchable Shane. That's Why don't right. you sit on that chair and okay. I'll conduct the spirit box session. Lovely, ah. that's nice. Oh yeah. My name's Ryan. I'm Shane. If there's anything in this room with us or anyone, rather, can you say our names back to us? After I ask for the spirits to say our names, we pick up what sounds like a voice whispering, Hey Ryan. Can you say our names back to us? Can you say our names back to us? If Joyce and Tim are with us in this room, can you tell us which one of you was deceased in this photo? My money's on Joyce. You look like a dead lady. Honestly, mad props for taking a funny photo like that. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's, pr that's pretty funny. Was that something you guys agreed upon? I feel like that would be very uh, unchill if it was not something you agreed upon before you died. Anybody with us here? Anybody at all? Whoa, what was that? Did, did that say Papa? Who was that? Could you say your name again? It sounded like it said Papa. Can you say your name and tell us why you're here? This beat kind of goes. We saw a video of this entire room going haywire. The monkey was clapping, lights were going on and off. Can you tell me why you did that? Spicy. We got a spicy one. Can you show me how you did that? Or we hear you like scratching people who sit in this chair. Can you scratch? I'm sitting in Look the chair. Look at all that thigh surface area. As far for you as to I scratch. can see, I am sitting in the chair. And don't open your legs like that. I don't see any scratches. You're careful now. Come on now. What are you doing? Scratches me. Scratch my meat. It stopped. Did I? Did, did my you, meat scare them? I think your meat scared it away, dude. I'm gonna put this ovulus down there. Bunch of junk on that trunk. Bring. Bring. Beautiful. Don't look at your own legs and say beautiful. <laughs> you gotta love yourself. <laughs> when, you, when, when you lifted your legs up, it said haunting. Beautiful. Don't look at <laughs> You're right, it is haunting. Do it again, do it again. You like that? Underline. One more, What? give me a review. Head potential. Head potential? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know that's about not, that. That's not this kind of show. <laughs> We're gonna leave if you don't stop being gross. Anything else that you, mad? Oh, you're mad. Oh, now you're, you're mad, mad. Mad because of the, of the loss of potential. What are you mad about? Carrie, month? We're gonna give you a little silence and we're gonna give you one last chance to activate every object in this room and make them fly around like at the end of Beetlejuice. You have one last chance to either turn something on in this room, to scratch Shane, or the next word you say better be something that makes me feel like I should stay here. Floor is yours. Shot. Power. Shot? That's what you came up with? Shot? Leather. Foot? Foot leather. Oh, you are wearing yeah. leather boots. That's true. It's a good thing you wore those short Scan. shorts. Scan, scan it, hold. I'm holding. You Oh, you want us both to do it? Oh, this actually is hard. It's tough. Oh shit, my leg's already starting to shake. Point it nice and straight. Okay, what? What, did you break something? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into our solo investigations. Let's do it. And now we move on to the final phase of the hunt, our solo investigation of the entire building. 
Let's see if we can uh, escape this room. <laughs> hopefully no monkey business. <laughs> but hopefully knockers. Here's how our solo investigation will work. Shane and I will each have 20 minutes of alone time in the location. Shane will go first, and at the end of his time, we'll hide a walkie-talkie in the building. Once Shane returns, he will give me a hint on where to find said walkie-talkie. Then it's my turn. I'll enter the building, and only after I radio back to Shane with the hidden walkie-talkie will the clock start on my 20 minutes of solo investigation. Let the games begin. How do you feel about uh, everything that's gonna go on out there? I feel strong about it. I feel like I'm gonna do a good job and I'm gonna catch all the ghosts that are here. I'm gonna wring their necks and uh, grab them by their tails. Yeah. And swirl them around, throw them out the window. Well, uh, we hope you go out there, you either get scratched or you do some scratching yourself. Go out there and make the Watcher brand, uh, no, no, you know what, not Watcher badge. Go out there and make the Ghost Files badge proud. Anyways, head on out there. Okay, I'll be back. Hey, hey, and don't forget, I'm watching you. Yeah, this is fun. We don't usually get to do this. Okay, time starts now. Well, here's the big long hallway that I'm walking down. I guess I'll start in ye old asylum. Check it out. Toss my good friend. Oh, oh, here. Oh boy. I'm not sure what he's doing now. It's always interesting when I, we have these kinds of setups because I often wonder what he's doing alone. Uh, talking to the ghosts here. Who's here? Nelson. How are you, buddy? My name's Shane. I'm gonna turn on the Ovilus. This is a piece of technology that costs a lot of money and doesn't do anything. Bill Sell. Bill Sell will. Bill Sell will. Am I talking to Bill Sell will? To see him being a big fat idiot, it's nice. Sometimes there's a comfort in knowing who your friend is. Oh, this was really hard to get through without this large helmet on, so it'll probably be harder with this. I don't actually know that I can make it through. It's worth trying. Oh. Total oh. front. Total front. Oh, okay. What's going on in here? Any ghosts? No. That's a shock to me. That, I am stunned. I'm gonna open up the door, great. Is there a Nelson here among us? Oh wait, I'm hearing something. Oh, I hear him. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna turn my light off. It's gonna be real dark and scary. Feel free to uh, talk into the Ovilus or to uh, my little EVP thing here. Scratch me, kill me, etc. Do all, all that you'd love to do. Um, make, make that thing go off. That would be very scary. Uh, here we go. Uh, turning my light off. Oh boy. Oh boy. A lot of haunted places we go to. Every now and then you get a nice insulated one that's just dead quiet. And this is one of those places. That's good. I don't even hear Ryan. He's surely chatting right now, but. He's just sitting, chilling, like he's Clooney on The Tonight Show. All right, moving along. That's enough fun in the asylum. We're gonna check out some other places around here. Ooh. We lost visual. We lost. You can run, but you can't hide. Hey, Nelson. It's me, Shane. Oh, no, wait. Look, he's coming into the, to the archive. Come on out. Uh, talk to the Ovilus. I'm coming down, and then I'm gonna be entering your weird little library. There we go. Yeah. Here's a little tunnel. All right, let's 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 give a little crawl here. I bet, I bet this is no, this is probably easy. <clears throat> Don't like this camera angle we have here of just his ass crawling. <laughs> his fucking cheeks just struck crawling into that fucking tunnel. Grandma. Did you say grandma? Is there a grandma here? Grandma? If there's a tunnel grandma, speak to my ovulus, tell me your name. What's your deal? How'd you end up here in this tunnel? Okay, you don't have to go that deep in there. That's that's plenty. I'm already all the way through. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep going. This fucker's gonna leave that walkie down there. I know he is. I think we've made it to the other room. Very very good. Let's see what's in here. 
I thought about saying you better not leave the walkie there, but that'll only encourage him to do it. How can I reverse psychology my way out of this one? Fuck it, let's try it. Yeah, that's probably a good spot for the walkie. <laughs> he doesn't like it. Yeah, okay, that worked. I think it worked. I think he thought like, yeah, no, he's not gonna get what he wants. Yeah, baby. Hello. It's my friend Nelson here. This is a spot where we heard quite a bit of commotion. It sounded like there was maybe some footsteps up above us, some creaks. I see a lot of haunted looking things here. I don't know if these have actual history attached to them. It's hard to differentiate uh, what is uh, just something somebody bought off of eBay and something that's alleged to be actual, you know, actually haunted or cursed. Finish. Finish, boom. Obelisk said finish. Does that mean I'm done? Unfortunately, no. Cool. Does, does this go anywhere? It does. Oh, oh! Oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I love this, I love this man. I love this guy. Oh my fucking God, buddy, you gotta come into this circus room, holy shit. Yeah, I just heard your reaction and it sounded like you creamed your pants. <laughs> Wait, can you hear me in there? That's right. What's your deal, man? I like you. I just wanted to go like, <laughs> you know? I wouldn't mind a, <laughs> oh, well, I'll get in here with this guy. I don't mind that. Hey, buddy, how are you? Can I, you mind if I hop in here with you? I think this is a good place to sort of end my investigation. Yeah. Yeah. This is a vibe. I think. What's going on, you in there playing with your balls? Can, can you see me in here? I actually can't see you in there, it's a blind spot. I know they told me to hide the walkie and the other, they recommended another spot for hiding the walkie, Sharp. but I gotta hide it in here. It's a great haunted place and I've had a lot of fun here. So thanks for having me. I'm gonna go visit my friend now and uh, he'll he'll be with you shortly. Hi. How was it? It, it was really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Where'd you put that walkie? Uh, in the circus room. My guess is you probably put it in that ball pit. I think you're gonna like the circus room quite a bit. Okay. You looking good, you looking fit. You got your helmet on, you're ready to tackle this bitch. Maybe I'll catch a ghost. Hopefully, that's always the plan. Um, uh, start out in the circus room. I'll give you that clue. That's where you'll find the walkie. very kind of you. Yeah, giddy up. We'll start the time when you get the walkie. Bye bye. Bye bye. I think it's this way into the archive room. Wait, am I going the right way? I have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> I just realized. He's in the archive. He really doesn't know where he is. Wrong room! I can't remember. Where the fucking... Dole Circus room. Nice. Let's see here. Smells like popcorn. Nice. Oh, the ball pit. <laughs> so good. This motherfucker hit it in a ball pit. I knew it. He's having fun. I knew, I knew he'd love the ball pit. I really put it back there. I wanted him to have to dig. <laughs> I'm sort of flying. Yeah, I figured. Ah, oh, shit. Hello? I mean, that was fun, right? Yeah, I figured you'd do that. I mean, you, know, you get a ball pit, you know what? Uh, before you leave that room, do a little investigation in there. Check, check out that popcorn guy, he's fun, right? Okay, he's standing still, shutting the door, very respectful. Standing in the corner like he's at the Blair Witch basement. Why are you just standing in the corner? <laughs> what the fuck is he doing? 
Ryan, you gotta move. Your time is paused while you. Uh, <laughs> you have to <laughs> it's pretty good, right? I mean, it was funny, yeah. I wanted you to think I was possessed or something. Is there anybody in here with me? Huh? Is there anybody in here with me? How about say something? Nelson? Doctor guy? Doctor dick? All right, I'm leaving this room. <laughs> you guys having fun in here? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting a little foggy in here. Or the building's on fire. The fuck? Which room is this? Is this a basement? Oh yeah, this is a basement. Ryan, I really want you to feel the vibes of this room. Can you lay down on that embalming table? Oh, nice. That, that cross just went upside down. Oh, reach in and grab the doll. Oh. Looks like she's stuck. Oh, fucking wind. I knew it. Unbelievable. Yeah, they're doing it. That's not doing anything. All right. Seriously. There was a bunch of lights and shit going off in here and a monkey clapping. Clap for me. You can do it. No? You know, why don't you switch over to the wheelchair and ask to be scratched? All right, it's scratching time. Say it's scratching time with a lot of energy, like when they say it's morphin' time. All right, here we go. It's scratching time! That's good. I'm gonna turn on the ovulus now. Once again, I'm in the chair, so you could feel free to scratch me. Listen. Listen to what? Stay. stay? Okay, I'll listen and I'll stay. What do you want me to do? Let, okay, what do you want to do with me with leather while I sit in this chair? What do you want me to stay and listen to? Ooh, there's some wrestling going on above me, I think. You know what's interesting is that I actually, I'm not getting scratched, but my legs did get itchy all of a sudden. I think that's some sort of like suggestive kind of thing. Ask Nelson if he's a leather daddy and try to bond over your shared love of leather. I'm trying to actually investigate here, okay? You're making a No. <laughs> Nelson, I've been asked to ask you if you're a leather daddy. And uh, I'd love to bond with you over our shared love of leather. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Nelson? Hmm. Something to think about. Us, far. Ryan, I'm seeing orb activity like crazy in this room. You are? Is there anybody here with me that's in the form of an orb? I'll tell you right now, I don't believe in orbs. I believe in ghosts. I don't believe in orbs. You know what? I'm bored by you, Nelson. I'm going into the uh, courtyard because I want to talk to that shadow. Don't leave the room yet. Don't leave the room yet? Why? Open the next door by the photo. Open the next door by the photo? What the fuck does that even mean? There's, There's a switch you can reach at the bottom brick. Oh, here we go. Nice. All right, folks, Nelson, if you want to follow me, I'm going somewhere. What the fuck is this now? Go up there. Go up there? Oh, dude, this is going to be gnarly. All right, let's see. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, I feel like I'm in quarantine with that movie Wreck. Or you know what? I kind of feel like I'm Bruce Willis in Die Hard. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, shit. Ah. Oh, come down to the coast. Share a few laughs. Have a good time. Ah. Ah. Hey, I've been here before. This is where the shadow guy is. Okay, you're at the top of Shadow Man Hill. Feel free to call for the Shadow Man. Shadow Man, I challenge you to a duel for the title of Shadow Man, I guess. Show yourself or push me off this hill. Shadow Man, are you here? You want me to turn on the ovulus again? I do love the smell of fog. It reminds me of Not Scary Farm. Any kind of Halloween event. I miss Halloween. Block, ceiling, 
Oh my God. Okay, so my head is being blocked by the ceiling and I am calm right now. How, how did you know that? Trip. No, fuck you, Shadow Man. You're not going to trip me. And Ryan is at the top of the hill speaking to Shadow Man. So you need to have a great time. Ryan, right, once you're done investigating at the top of the hill, go, go down the slide. What are you talking about? It's to your right. Oh my god, there is a slide. Oh shit. Oh. I don't think I'm going to be able to go down this with all my shit on. We'll find out. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Ah. Fucking be a ghost hunter, they said. Oh, wow, I have a mega wedgie. Ho, oh, this is not sliding at all. Oh. Hey. Ah. What the fuck? Oh, this fucking guy, he looks like Christopher Lloyd. This is your last room, so do some call outs in here. Really do a thorough investigation. Have a good time. Well, my name is Ryan. Fuck you! I am not a slave. I'm not your slave. Oh, it says beer, please. As I was going down the slide, this guy's trying to get sloshed. I have beer. It's in the break room. Do you want some? Percent. Uh, you could have a hundred percent of it. That's what friends do. They don't. I don't say, "Hey, Shane, you could have fifty-seven percent of this Coors." Ooh, I hear shuffling around. Who's here with me? Actually, I'm getting the, the vibe changed in here. I actually am a little scared now. Who is in here with me? I hear you. Show yourself. Jesus, this is actually kind of scary now. It sounds like it's coming from this coffin. Okay, that's just a dead lady. hearing this, right? There's no way. This has to be fake. This just moved. This this just fucking moved. Is that is that part of the the escape room? Is that you? <laughs> of course. A fucking course. That's the end of it. You're all done. Was that you rustling around? I was like, I hear something. Yeah, it was me. Unbelievable. Mark's here too. Uh, it's great. How was it? I think I did okay. Did you lay down in this? No, because it looked kind of gross, honestly. The sheets, like, I don't know. You can lay in there if you want. All right, well, I'll, I'll get cozy in here. <laughs> and then, wow, it is really strange to be. It's not, nah, it's more just like the sheets look kind of grimy. All right, well, that's it for me. Brian, it's been a pleasure. See you later. See you next time, everybody. Damn, I'm gonna have to find a new co-host. Well, this has been fun. Goodbye, Dare to Escape. Dare to Escape was an escape room built to amuse that now also terrifies. But as to who or what is the culprit for the latter, that is still unknown. Did we make contact in the courtyard? Is there something actually lurking in that hallway. Our job as investigators is to collect and present questions, possibilities. Interpretation, however, solely belongs with you. But for our part, Dare to Escape can now be locked away in the ghost files. Wait, 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 I know how to test if it's you. Tell me if this hurts. Ow, oh, fuck. What? <laughs> it's just a bit, don't worry. Don't worry, everybody. Don't worry.